Welcome back, everybody. The first Ultimate General Civil War of the new year, and we are on to the Mule Shoe, which is Spotsylvania. I, again, am not looking forward to this one. I expect it to be really challenging, and you'll see why in just a minute. You can only take two core into this fight, and I will be outnumbered by about 5,000 men. I do outgun him by about 40. So we're going to have to be really cautious and really smart with how I choose to launch this attack. Now, uh, I've gotten some great advice from some of you on exactly how to go about this. And I'm going to take some of that advice. I have not uh, gone in and kind of played this battle ahead of time. So I'm going in like it's the first time playing it. Uh, I remember a little bit from a long time ago from playing this battle, but for the most part, going in blind. So uh, it seems to be the general consensus is to go around the Confederate lines and hit him down here uh, on the bottom left, on the left side of his line, and hit the objective directly. Uh, they tell you in the instructions to go right through the top, which is the mule shoe, which is where there was heavy, heavy fighting for the better part of a day. Um, but no, we're obviously not going to do that. I have no melee cavalry in this battle. Uh, many of you suggested that would probably not help me at all. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just start the process here early in the morning of riding around the enemy lines. I don't know where I expect to find him, but I'm definitely going to start by sending some mountain infantry ahead to get a glimpse of what's happening. It looks like these guys are already kind of heading that way, so we're just going to start making sure everybody gets shifted in the right direction. We'll head out first with the melee or with the uh, mounted infantry. Get a sense of what's out there. I'm sure he's got skirmishers around somewhere, but maybe not. They might all be behind the fortifications, and then we'll come in behind them with my sharpshooters, my artillery. Uh, so right now, you can see, even now, he's got me outnumbered pretty heavily. I've got more guns on the field than him, but he's got about ten thousand more men than me. So I just want to get a glimpse of what's out there. It's so dark because it's only 4 o'clock in the morning that I'm having a hard time even seeing the battlefield right now. I probably should brighten it up a little bit. Let's take a look and see if I can do that. Eh, maybe not. I thought there was a way to do that. So we'll just start ordering everybody in this direction. I'm not going to worry too much about formations for now. I just want to get them over there and then I'll organize them as I go along. I want to screen and make sure that I know exactly where his lines are so I'm not running into him. It looks like here's the fortification line right here. So let's hold these guys kind of tight right here. Oh boy, okay. So there's the skirmishers, there's the artillery. I'm going to dismount these three units and just basically use them as a force to screen and protect my flanking movement. Get up, get up close enough to hit these skirmishers. I'm going to be under his artillery fire, but maybe that'll help uh, kind of wear him down in terms of his supplies. All right, everybody else, we're going to start coming down this way. I'm going to go ahead and send up a, a unit of sharpshooters here. There's three hours and 39 minutes. I don't know if I have to take this objective during that time. I'm guessing I probably don't. Oh boy, more skirmishers. Oh, hello. I need to get more mounted infantry up there quickly. Really wasn't expecting skirmishers out there. So that means we're probably going to have to screen on both sides, which kind of stinks. Wasn't really having one have to worry about that. And then I'll just 
basically have to send all my units right down the middle. Make a little funnel here to send all my troops through. Okay, it's starting to get a little brighter. There's his fortifications. Looks like he's dropped everybody back. I gotta get these guys in a little more cover here. And we'll just start funneling everybody down in the middle of these lines. Oh, here comes the Notorious supply run that he'll use to kind of either scout me with his supplies or try to draw me out. Running his supplies way out in front of his fortifications. At the very least, we can shoot those supplies and mess him up a little bit. Best case scenario, I ride out and grab them. Usually I don't fall for this temptation, but they're so far out in front of his lines that I feel like I've got to try. Oh, there's his skirmishers right there, but guess what, boys? I got them. Even if it means taking a few casualties along the way, it's worth it in this case. All right, here come reinforcements. So let's pause for just a second and kind of evaluate the situation. Uh, my other core has arrived, so that evens the odds out somewhat. We're still working to get in position, though, and I know he's going to have a counterattack at some point. So I've got to get these guys down into position and start shelling those lines. And I also have to make sure I keep track of where that other unit is back here. So let's start getting the rest of these units down here, especially the artillery. Taking a long time to do that. Make sure I get these supplies back to safety. All right, second core, let's start riding them down as well. I'm just going to give them all orders, basically, to go to about the same general location. Oh, we found his skirmishers. And we got into a melee situation that I really wanted to avoid. we got to get these skirmishers out of here before my men start riding down in there. No, we don't want melee. There we go. Rebel cavalry spotted, of course. He's riding out at me. He's trying to get those supplies back. Not gonna work, my friend. So he's definitely trying to disrupt things by sending skirmishers out, and it seems to be working for the most part. We gotta get these guys back. It's just a long, tedious process trying to get my my troops down into position where I want them. And I want to get them down all the way down here where this road is. He just got his reinforcements. I gotta wipe this skirmisher unit out. I don't want them back there forever.
Everybody continues to move. Takes forever. Still plenty of time though. Oh, he's bringing artillery out. That's really interesting. I'm gonna bring out some sharpshooters to hit those guys. is skirmishers. We gotta keep looking for them. Send a little help over to help these guys out some. a little bit of uh, smoothbore artillery up there. I don't want him getting around my flank. Need to wipe these skirmishers out. I guess I need to get my sharpshooters a hair closer. They're not... There they go. Now they're firing on his artillery. So there's a lot to do here. I've got everybody kind of bunched up up there. So let's keep getting them, get them keep moving here. I think I've got enough up here now to hold off what he's trying to do. fighting. These sharpshooters need to keep firing. Alright, we routed his artillery there. Come on, get these guys dealt with. Down to just two hours now. I don't like that. Then again, the objective is not that far behind his line. So let's look at the numbers real quick. Just want to see where the situation is. He just got reinforcements. Uh, so he's got me by about 6,000 men, which is about where he started. Uh, I've taken out 14 of his guns. Haven't lost any of mine yet. I'm probably going to run into a supply issue pretty soon up here on my left. That concerns me a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do here, uh, let me pause for just a second, is I want to get a bunch of my mounted infantry down here, right through his line quickly, and then establish a dismounted line maybe up here in these woods somewhere. But first I want to get as much of my artillery in place as possible. Done with these guys yet? My goodness.
here we go. Alright, so he's got quite a bit loaded up here. I desperately need to deal with these skirmishers once and for all. I'm just going to send everybody over there to deal with them and get done with it. So I can free up these troops. These guns up here are taking a pounding, but at least that's keeping some of the focus of his artillery over there. I need to make these skirmishers surrender and be done with them. Alright, let's get my rifled artillery firing on his artillery. Soften them up best I can. Alright, these guys are done. This should be the end of them. Let's go ahead and charge, even though these aren't really melee units. He should surrender soon or break one of the two. All right, perfect. Now let's pause for just a second. All right, now we get into position to take the objective. Let's get everybody mounted. Keep these guys back in the corner. See, my artillery is pounding these lines and not much is happening. I want to hit the guys that are out in the open. And I also want to move up these smooth bores. do here is oh there's the wolverines hey chris that's your unit uh chris is one of the newest patrons and he just uh decided to really stick it to this buckeye and name a, a unit the wolverines kind of like uh general custer's unit was the wolverines we won't hold that against him so i'm gonna let some skirmishers get up here and kind of screen the attack gonna start riding through with everybody so the skirmishers will take some casualties but we want to get up on his flank as quickly as I can drive him out of those fortifications these are not melee units but with enough melee engagement I should still be able to drive him off slow things down here because this is a kind of a crucial stage of the fighting where a lot of casualties are going to be happening. start moving up smoothbore artillery. I 
hour and 16 to go, so I'm a little tight on time. The objective is just right there. Let's see how the numbers look. I, he had a 6,000 man advantage earlier. I don't know if he's gotten more reinforcements since then, but it's just a 4,600 man advantage now. I have lost six guns, but I've taken out 30 of his. So I've got a, a pretty decent advantage in terms of my artillery now. And we're through the toughest part. Oh, we don't want those hunters up that far. Let's back them up. Now the artillery is starting to hit him a little better. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to push him up out of this position so I can get around to the objective. And now I'm going to start running into, into his artillery. Yeah, Platt's gonna take it from that. Or Pyatt, I guess it is. Push up a little further. I don't want these guys getting fired into their flanks. All right, let me pause again for just a second here so I can continue to bring up my smoothbore artillery. There's just an hour to go. I'm going to keep moving my artillery forward as best I can while keeping some of the artillery firing. Oh, these sharpshooters aren't even being used at all, hardly. I've never been real good with sharpshooters, uh, just more micromanaging than I care to do during a battle. Alright, he's got a couple of brigades sitting on the objective in fortifications inside his initial fortifications. Keep pushing through his artillery here. 54 minutes to go. If I can keep him bottled up here at the top, that'll be ideal. Slow down again. All right, let's get the Wolverines dismounted. Most of these front frontline units are definitely taking more casualties than they're inflicting, but we expected that. My artillery's making up most of the difference in casualties. get up so we can start firing on these guns. Ride some more units 
behind the lines to get them over here. Take a look. 42 minutes to go. His advantage is still... Boy, it's up actually almost to 5,000 now. I'm down to just under 16,000 men. That's not ideal. But if I can just drive him out of these objectives... And get my artillery in a position where they can be much more deadly. Get these Napoleons way up. 24 pounders way up. Wolverines are taking a an attack. They held all right. All right, come on artillery. Ugh, oh, that's brutal. Brutal fire I'm taking down here right now. Just 33 minutes to go. I'm finally out to where I can get on the edge of his fortifications now. We can drive Humphreys out of there. wasn't a well-coordinated attack on my part because I spent so much time just trying to get my troops into position that uh, I didn't really have a nice organized attack like I wanted to. Thomas isn't exactly an ideal amount of troops to hold my right flank with. Let's send Frank over there. And Ledlio as well. Now he's going to try to counterattack down in here. That's fine. That's where most of my artillery is. He's trying to reoccupy the objectives. 18 minutes to go. I may have waited too long. I don't know if that matters. We're going to find out. All right, hold tight, Wolverines. Hold tight, Garfield. Thirteen minutes left. He did get reinforcements. He keeps getting reinforcements. That's why his numbers keep going up and mine keep going down. I feel like I'm going to be just a little bit too late from driving him out of these objectives. I'm going to hit his artillery again. Frank getting sucked right in up there stay up there Wolverines stay there Garfield Union secured mule shoe with one minute to go I'm sure that's not the end of this battle though Or is it? Oh, wow. 
That's what we call by the skin of your teeth. My goodness. With one minute to spare, I am so glad to be done with that battle. Uh, that could have gone a lot better, I'm sure. Uh, that was not a well-coordinated attack. I could have done a lot more uh, to coordinate that better. But the end result is what we wanted, which is a victory. I was outnumbered. He held vastly superior position. I had no infantry, but I still managed to squeak my way to a victory. So uh, casualties, about 5,000. Really, honestly, not that bad, considering. It looks like I inflicted about... Uh, 8,000, 8,500 casualties, only lost eight guns, took out 80 of his. Um, I did lose quite a few officers, so that, that was a big problem there. Uh, you can see the number of officers that were wounded. Only one actually killed, and that was a colonel. But that takes us to the Battle of Cold Harbor. Now, Cold Harbor I feel a little better about because of my mobility, but we'll see. Uh, we know historically that was one of the biggest debacles for the Union Army during the war. Uh, just a complete disaster uh, because of the, the frontal assault uh, early in June. But we're going to take our chances with all of that and just kind of see what happens. Um, let's see what the, the makeup of his army looks like. I think this is one of those multi-day battles that you don't really necessarily get to see his full makeup of his army right off the bat. So we'll take a look and see where that stands right now. All right, so on the first day, he's got 11,000. Obviously, it's, it's going to change. But at least in this battle, I can take my entire army. So I should have a decent advantage. Uh, so again, let me know your thoughts. I know I could have done that better, but if there's something specifically you saw that you felt would have made that battle go better for me, let me know. Um, let me know your thoughts about Cold Harbor moving forward. I haven't fought that one for quite a long time, so we'll see how it goes. Please hit that thumbs up if you haven't already. Uh, check out here at the end of this video, you'll see a link to my look ahead at 2019. A lot of good stuff in there just to let you know what's coming with the channel. Check out some of my other videos. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that little bell so you'll get notifications. And we will see you again real soon. Have a great day, everybody.